Welcome to the Mom and Dot 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 podcast. We're your hosts, Suzanne Kearns and Missy Stevens. We want to help you through everything that happens in the ellipses, from your professional life to your emotional health. You're a mom and so much more. Let's figure out what comes next together. Welcome to the Mom and Dot 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 podcast. Today, we are thrilled to have guest Kelly Rippon, who started her consulting company, Authentic Change, in 2006 with the mission of changing the world one conversation at a time, which we just love. And those conversations combined with her work as a college instructor, corporate trainer, and single mother of six incredible children, including her oldest son, Olympic medalist Adam, prompted her to write Parent Up an empowering book about developing an effective leadership perspective while building resiliency, empathy, and optimism. And our books are so close to being delivered. But for any of y'all who are watching <laughs> on YouTube, that looks so real. That looks that so, doesn't look so real. Doesn't I know. It? <laughs> I should be in charge of special effects. So I'm showing an example of the book for those of you who are listening instead of I watching the we'll link one. to it. Oh, there Thank you go. You. The official book. Yeah, see it back there. Congratulations, Thank author. You. That is Thank a you. big accomplishment. Yeah. And, you know, our podcast is more about like the moms versus the kids. But I love how, although the book is written from the point of view of a parent and it's about inspiring kids, these lessons are kind of ageless. They don't just have to yes. apply to a parent doing something for their kids. So would love to hear more about how some of those lessons from the book can also be applied to the moms themselves, not just the right. kids. I think the title is somewhat deceiving because it's parent up. And the idea is that when you inspire those around you, whether it be your, your teammates or your workplace you know, your work staff, your neighborhood, your friends, your family, or your children, you create a force so great that you rise with them. What I did was I took my years of training in the corporate world and uh, college instruction, and I merged them together as a leadership model. And that's what I talk about. It's, I think it's more of a self-development book than a how-to parenting book. And mm -hmm. for me, it was mm -hmm. teaching and communicating. And that's what I did primarily in the corporate world was uh, talking about customer service, persuasion, communication, sales. So that is what parenting is. You're really yes. trying to get a buy-in from your customer, which happens to be <laughs> a toddler, right? That doesn't want to go to bed. So all of they those- They are the toughest customers yes, of all. So yes. it, that's really what it is. It's a, it's a leadership because- a good parent is a great leader. So mm -hmm. that's a, Ooh, that's a great quote. Yeah. I know yes. that on a bumper you don't sticker. have to be a parent. So many people have contacted me and said, you know, I picked up my sister's copy and I can't believe that, you know, that I'm going to be running a golf tournament and I'm going to use a lot of these principles in working with sponsors and working with some of the people that are in this. And I don't have children. So mm -hmm. it gives you an opportunity to widen your perspective. So it is definitely a self-development, no kids needed. <laughs> well, anybody who's worked in an office of any kind knows that parenting tactics are sometimes required with certain coworkers yes. and employees. So there's yes. and bosses and bosses. Sometimes you have to parent yes. up your bosses a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. So now just uh, to give me a little more framework for your career path. Mm -hmm. So you are a mother of six, a yes. single mother of six, yes. which as a daughter of a single mother of two, I mean, hats off times three of that, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, and especially as such incredible kids take us back. What had your visions been for your career before that? And then how, how has that been impacted six times over? Um, well, I think when you know, I've had multiple careers, you know, I was a nurse, I was a ballet dancer, I was a dance teacher, I had a dance studio, I was a teacher, I went back to school and got my master's degree. So I was able to teach in college. Mm -hmm. Then I became a corporate trainer, I went back to school again, and got a, you know, a wider education and communication, so that I was able to do more body language and communication styles. Wow. So I think number one, don't limit yourself as a, I don't want to say older mom, but as a more seasoned mother, <laughs> um, 
don't limit yourself to say, you know, I'm a lawyer and this is my career. Someone said to me once, I have a, I have a master's for, in uh, journalism from Emory and this is what I'm doing today. And I said, your child is so blessed that she actually has a caretaker that has a master's from Emory. Like you should be thrilled because you, you probably go into a boutique and want to buy the very best shoes for her, or the very best coat. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want to get her the very best mother, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think sometimes we diminish the role as mother and it's yes. it's kind of like we say, I'm a mom, but I also, the, there comes a time in, in, in a seasoned mother's life that you know that you don't have to put a comma. Like it is M-O-M -M, uh, in bold letters, like mom is enough. Someone would say to me, did you have a life before kids? Yeah. And I'll say, I did. And you know what? Sure. I'm still living it. My life <laughs> yeah. didn't get turned off and then get turned on six times. Like mm -hmm. it's a continuation and you're cheating yourself out of a lot of joy. If you think that just by reprioritizing things that you're sacrificing, Yeah, you know, Sometimes people will look to my oldest child and they'll say, oh, he gave up so much. Okay, let's just pause. He got to do what he loved to do every day mm -hmm. with the people who were the very best in the world. He got to travel all around the globe representing his country. That doesn't sound like <laughs> you're going to a coal mine every day, does it, for 12 <laughs> hours, right? It doesn't. So... I think we see, and it, of course it's super hard work, but you don't sacrifice what most people think, proms, school trips, friendships, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? So I think sometimes parents do the same things, especially mothers, because did you ever ask a man, no matter how hands-on he is, what did you do before you became a dad? Never. What? <laughs> Or like you'd say to a man, um, how has this slowed down your career? Like still in 2021, um, still. you know, International Women's Day, right? Yeah. And we wouldn't do that. We do it to nope. ourselves. You know, when we see someone else, oh, well, you know, I used to have a corner office and now I'm at the corner of the room, you know, in the playroom. Uh, we do it all the time. <laughs> and you diminish like that it's not that important. Where and were you, you 15 crazy. years ago when I needed this talk? Well, you know what? You are raising, <laughs> because I had to convince myself of this when I pulled back and decided to have four part-time jobs, then a mm -hmm. single track focused one, and to still start getting my, my connection of satisfaction internally versus awards. Or as mm. a good friend of mine would say, like, how many more letters after your name do you need to feel that you're enough. And that like, Ooh, that was a hard one. Yeah. Cause I thought you're right. Why do I keep going back to school? I mean, I love to learn and mm -hmm, I love right. to be challenged, but I think it was having the confidence to say, I know enough for today and I'm confident enough to know that I still need to learn so much more. Mm -hmm. So to be comfortable right. with the idea that you have a, a wide window of ignorance and sure. so does everybody else, I love that. you know? So now I am curious because you've done, you've done a lot of these career pivots mm -hmm. throughout the years. So was that just, you know, following an inspiration in your heart or is it opportunities were presented to you and you just know when to follow those? Like how, how did those pivots come about? Yeah. Um, well, the pivots came about mainly my priority was to be present for my kids, to be, to be able to go on field trips, to be, yeah. that was important to me. That didn't mm -hmm. make me a better parent. So for those that like, if I, if I didn't want to do that and I could have filled in the gap with a grandparent or my sister or a good friend or a grandparent or a nanny, if those things were options for me and I couldn't do it, like I said, doing it didn't make me a better mother. It made me feel better about being a mother. And there's a big difference. Yep. Because when you feel better about being a mother, you're a better mother. Mm -hmm. I'm letting that sink in here for a minute. I know. <laughs> about that one. They, were, they were important to me. And I knew I didn't have a ton of 
energy to give out. And when you are in a tight work community for 10 or 12 hours a day, I did have the support to do that where the kids Mm -hmm. would just be freestyling it all day long. And the idea of me going out and doing something like that and then giving that energy and then coming home, I knew, I knew my limits and, and I knew what my priorities were. And I directed my energy to what made me feel more competent about what my priorities were. My priorities were to raise really mindful citizens Mm -hmm. and that were kind to each other and Mm -hmm. to develop a sense of family. And that was my main goal. And I didn't make excuses that, you know, if somebody said, well, where do you work or what do you do or whatever? And if if I was teaching English to Chinese kids at five o'clock in the morning, that's what I was doing. Like I did a multitude of things so that I had time available for my kids. I mean, I was a substitute teacher. Like some days I was teaching kindergarten, coming home, teaching a communications class at a local university. And then at night, like doing resumes or teaching English as a second language. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. I had many things going on, Mm -hmm. but I had control over it. I think that idea of control is so empowering Yeah, and like figuring that out for yourself had to be part of the, your process of Mm -hmm. coming into who you are. Have you taken, obviously you've taken those lessons and put Mm -hmm. some of that in your book. What is it you say to a woman who's, who's doing the, well, but or I don't know, or I used to be in that office. How do you help her find that empowerment within herself? I think in order to lift like your mood about anything, you have to lift your perspective. So you need to get at that 30,000 feet Mm. because I have never had a plan B. Okay. And that's so important because you need to have a wide, very flexible and resilient plan A. Someone said to me once, what would have happened? What was your plan B if Adam didn't go to the Olympics? What was his, his plan B? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't think he had one. I think the idea is that you need to have a wide enough plan A and plan A is to be thoughtful, to be able to process criticism as feedback and not insults to just assume the world is on your side. And to know, like, if someone's trying to push you down, dismiss them and go away. Like don't have them near you. And I had to be very selective of who I spent time with, who I communicated with, because it sounds, it sounds like, oh, wow. You know, people, you're, everybody must've come together and thought, no, people thought I was a crazy person. Like (laughs) what crazy stage mother thinks their kid can go to the Olympics? Like that's obnoxious, right? How old was he? We're kind of off track, but how old was he when you realized like this is going to be his plan A and when he realized it and you were jumped on board with him? Okay. His plan A was never to go to the Olympics. His plan A was to develop habits of a champion, to wake up early, to apply a hundred percent to the day, to be able to take criticism like a champion, to know that it was for improvement and not an insult to be able to learn from every experience, to be gracious when you don't get what you want. And Mm -hmm. more importantly, to be able to root for other people who get what you wanted to, and to know that you can still have it, that there there's enough success for everyone. It's not just, you know, somebody won, won that competition. So therefore you can never win. So that those are the things Mm -hmm. I think once he had that mindset, no matter what he does, he'll, he'll meet with success. Yeah. It didn't matter if it was sports, he could have gone into academics or he could have gone, gotten into, you know, broadcasting or, or Mm -hmm. like he is now with entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's your plan A that you want to be true to yourself. You know, as a mother, your plan A is that you don't just, you know, there's a story in my book And my daughter, the phone rings and back in the day, I don't know if you remember with landline phones, (laughs) Oh yes, you know that, well, they, they would call all the time. And my thing was, I'm sorry, I don't take solicitation over the phone. I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you for calling. And I would end the phone call. Mm -hmm. Well, my daughter heard me say this and she said, oh, if it rings again, I'll answer it and I'll tell them that you're not here. And I said, why would you do that? And she said, that's what we did at her friend Courtney's house. And 
name change to protect the innocent. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> so she said, that's what we did at Courtney's house. And I said, what did you do? She said, oh, her mother said, tell them I'm giving the baby a bath. Cause she didn't want to talk to, she's like, telemarketers are so annoying. And I thought, what? I said, what does that mean? She said, I don't know, but that's what Courtney's mother said. She said, they, they just call to harass you. They're so annoying. So I started like pulling more information from her. I said, do you even know what a telemarketer is? And she said, no. And I said, it's a job. It's a job where someone goes to work and then they try and sell you stuff that their company is selling. And then they get a paycheck and then they pay for groceries and rent and school plays and all of those things, movie tickets with their pay. And she was like, what? So she didn't even understand. And I think that's what Mm -hmm. happens with our kids. They don't understand and we let it go. Mm, So I I said to her, what does it mean when, wouldn't that be a lie if you said I wasn't, if I was in the shower? And she said, well, it's not a lie if you tell it to someone you don't know. Oh boy. <laughs> oh no. So it was That's such a workaround a right there. Moment. Yes. And I said, yes, it is. And I said, then <sighs> do you think that some people are worth telling the truth to? And some people aren't worth oh. telling the truth to? She cry. You know, she was sobbing at that point oh. because she understood that yeah. dishonesty is dishonesty full stop. Yeah. So, if you want your kids to learn these lessons, sometimes it stinks because you have to go through the steps of stuff you don't like to do Mm -hmm. because they're going (laughs) to copy what you do. And if you lie on the phone and say, tell them I'm in the shower, they're going to be more comfortable telling you they're at Johnny's when they're really at Kimberly's. Mm -hmm. It's all about leading by example. Yeah. So that's what the book is really about. Like as a leader, you're an influence. And the thing is being a parent or being a coach or being a teacher is an opportunity for the best journey in self-development you could ever wish for. Because to be a better leader, you have to lead by example. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I know. I just want to sit in some of this and soak it in. But part of me, where we were, where you started with this mm-hmm. idea of that there's women who feel that now, once mm-hmm. they become a mother, they get put in this box. I feel like they mm-hmm. should be handed this book once their baby's born and be <laughs> yeah. like, you are a leader today. Even if you're becoming a stay at home mom, you need to keep that leadership mentality mm-hmm. so you don't get bowled over by this, you know, this kid once they turn one year old, because you do for that first year, you do kind of become, even though, you know, you're not necessarily leading, you're the caretaker. Right. But they do kind of become the boss for a while oh and that gets God. in your yeah. head and it would be very easy to then have a two-year-old who stays the boss mm-hmm. if, if you've kind of just continued right. that mentality instead of yeah. being, no, I'm the leader in this relationship. They mm-hmm. may get to call more of the shots when it comes to, <laughs> you know, wanting yeah. to eat or, or nap times kind of thing. But really you need to keep that mentality because it, I think I, I can speak for myself. I got to a point where I was not feeling like the leader of my kid for a while. I mean, it was more of a, my life was around, you know, Mm -hmm. things that they wanted to do or making sure that I was accommodating what I thought was best for them versus Mm -hmm. thinking, no, I need to take care of myself. And then uh, by doing that, you'll learn how to take care of yourself. I bought them to like, for you know, some parents don't like to play with their kids. I like to play with them because I bought them toys that I wished I had as a kid. (laughs) So like Playmobil and things like that, that I never had. I wanted them and I wanted the Barbie dream house. And (laughs) like, I was all in for that. So yeah, you, you know, it's the thing is, as long as you feel that it's like, when you allow someone to cut in front of you on the highway, you have the power. They're not cutting you off. You're letting them go. And it's up to you to decide that. So the same with your children, they're not taking away your career or they're not, you, you decided. Decided. And when Mm -hmm. you feel like that, it's your power and you shouldn't have guilt. It is so funny because I'm, I'm looking at my list of questions and I, I just need to just throw uh, this one away because it was about your own identity as now, when you've got, you know, a, an Olympic 
medal winner son, like, what does that do? Cause mm-hmm. you know, as parents, we usually get called, I get called Zoe's mom all the time. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm not Suzanne anymore. I'm Zoe's mom. And yeah. I, I don't take offense to it. I, I mean, <laughs> obviously people, you know, call me Adam's mom or, you know, in others, you know, if I have a daughter in theater, like they'll call me Jordy's mom or wherever I'm at, you know, in that mm-hmm. community, I, I know who I am. Yeah. Like, well, that's why I'm saying, I'm just going to throw this question away yeah. because after talking to you for a half hour, there is I the like it question. kind of, you do not have a problem I'm with coordinated. it. When they think I'm Adam's mom, they think I'm like, you know, a good skater. Or if they think, you know, I'm great <laughs> mom, they think like I'm a math genius or fluent in languages, or they could think I'm there. I'm like, it's in the DNA. Cause it's not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about having six children just I have two so six blows my mind but it's a lot yeah. to have six children <laughs> and to put together this life that you have put together and this understanding that this is my life I had a life before it's still going on mm-hmm. how did you this is a basic bare bones question but how did you structure your day with six mm-hmm. kids to make sure that you were still mm-hmm. meeting your needs and achieving mm-hmm. the things you wanted to achieve I did actually a week at a time. I, you know, I do believe in temporary and being super flexible. And when I got divorced, you know, custody is always an issue. And it wor- mm-hmm. worked best for us after the first week or two, having so many young kids, because the, they were three, five, seven, nine, 11, and 13. And Adam mm-hmm. was going to Philadelphia three of those days during the week. And then once we got divorced, he was staying over so that I wasn't driving back and forth because I couldn't be in all those places at once. And he was two and a half hours away where he was Mm -hmm. skating. So my ex-husband took them, came over and picked them up at around six o'clock on a Friday, and then would take them out to dinner and then would bring them back on Saturday. And then every other week, bring them back Saturday morning. And then every other week, bring them back Sunday morning. And that was my, I had them all the time. So like six days or five days. Um, Yeah. Uh, or six and a half days or five and a half days. And I knew when my free windows were, and I knew what was important Mm -hmm. to me. And I had a friend that gave me some very solid advice and said, you have always been so busy or so directed about like this self-improvement and you were always moving. I I'm challenging you for one year to just stay still with yourself and Mm -hmm. to not like try and make new friends and to not like, be that global person, you know, mm-hmm. and just stay still for a year. Did you? And I thought, oh, <laughs> she just doesn't want me to have a life. Like she, she doesn't understand, you know, that I love connection and meeting people and blah, blah, blah. And, and I took her, I took her up on the challenge and I, my Friday nights became like my self-care nights. Like I would go pick up a meal somewhere, bring it home, watch a movie, take myself to like dinner and a movie by myself. Mm -hmm. Then I got a little more comfortable with going out to Mm -hmm. places that I didn't know anyone that I wasn't going to run into because I live in a very small town, 2,500 people. So everyone knows everyone. So I, I might go like to the town over and sit and have like a slice of pizza somewhere or go somewhere and to a movie or something like that. And to try and take myself out, even if it was just to a Starbucks with like an audio book or a puzzle mm-hmm. book or something like that yeah. for an hour or two. But I got to, I got comfortable with doing that. And it was very strange because one day I woke up and I thought, I'm not thinking about like anybody or anything like I really do have a fresh palette to start the day. Oh, oh that's nice. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't, I didn't know that before that, like in order to not feel so empty, you have to try and find that you're already full. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So oh, that helped me. Yeah. So I, that kind of, kind of got me. I know. <laughs> <kinda got> me. <laughs> Are you choked up? I know that that's, that's really good. And you know what? We're getting so close to our cutoff time. We still have our look, listen, learns. I want to talk to you so much about so many things. I I wanted to talk to you about the actual process of writing the book. Mm -hmm. I also want to talk to you. I run a group called the Informed Parents of Austin. We advocate for LGBTQ kids in our Mm -hmm. school district. And so- I was trying to get in touch with that organization. 
Well, oh, there you're well, in touch. There you go. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. Here I am. Yes. Um, but yes. So one of my things that I do, I mean, I am a cis het person, non LGBTQ, neither of my kids that I'm aware of are LGBTQ, but I feel it's really important for parents like me mm-hmm. to advocate. We mm-hmm. have a different audience mm-hmm. and circle, not advocate, like everybody doesn't necessarily have to go to a school board meeting. They don't have to, you know, go March, but just to shut Be down, mm-hmm. shut down jokes in a social setting. Or to make sure that they're aware that, you know, we're trying to get inclusive sex ed in schools Mm -hmm. that's inclusive Mm -hmm. of the needs of LGBTQ students. Or just, just to, you know, we're having Pride Week coming up in our district in a month or so. And, you know, for these parents to know that that's important for all kids Mm -hmm. and not just LGBTQ Mm -hmm. kids. And to make sure, you know, and have the questions to ask their kids like, hey, are you participating in such and such? Mm -hmm. And making sure that the parents are involved too. So do you have any advice for me as a person who's, you know, this straight cis head person um, running this group, how to get other parents like me to care Mm -hmm. more about someone who they feel is not their kid, but could very well be their kid. And they're just not aware of it now. Um, And so I would, I would love feedback on Mm -hmm. that. There's just so much. Well, I say to, especially to parents, don't wait until one of your children tells you they're gay to become an ally Mm -hmm. because there's just too much makeup. You know, it's like coming in, in the third quarter, like, and plus with, with an unclear mind. So, I mean, if yeah. you have information, you know, cause someone said to me, we talked about Adam's coming out and ABC invited us back to recreate the, the coming out letter. Cause he did a letter for coming out two years ago for ABC and, and the and good morning America did it. And mm-hmm. um, they revisited it and asked me to write him a letter recreating that day. And oh. I said, it was so important. It was such a nice idea and it's on YouTube. You could find it if um, you oh, will definitely link um, to that in the show notes. Yeah, yeah it, it and it was a letter to him on what I wish I could have said that day if I got to redo it. But I said it that day we were very casual about it. And I wanted him to know, I, I don't think I would have done it differently, but I wanted him to know that I was like cool and, and calm and, you know, so woke on the outside, but like I was <laughs> fist pumping for him because even though I knew he was gay, he, you know, that he, he, you know, spoke of his sexual orientation, but never came out and had a coming out moment, mm-hmm. um, that if, if a young person or old person, but a person in the community wants that moment, it's their moment. So it shouldn't be like, welcome, proud of it. You know, it, it's their 100% moment. So it's, it's, it, it, it's a moment where they give the, the person who's the ally 100% permission to validate. So yeah. now when somebody says, you know, when they, when they come out officially publicly, mm-hmm. when someone says your son is gay, I can say, isn't that great? Mm-hmm. Instead of what I used to have to say, why does that make you curious? Because someone would say, is Adam gay? And I would say, why does that make you curious? Why, why are you curious about that? Mm-hmm. Instead, because it wasn't my place yeah, to say, right. He is, but he's not officially out. So could you keep it between, uh, you yeah. know, people put you mothers in really awkward situations. Yes. And I say very openly, even people at the highest level in figure skating would put me in that situation. And I thought like name, rank, and serial number. I am a mother. Like I, that mm-hmm. is none of your business. And I'm going to say it in the most polite terms possible. Mm-hmm. Why are you curious about that? Because it has nothing to do with them. That's such a nice, so, polite way of saying, why is this any of your business? <laughs> right. It has none, or anything else. Right. And um, unless they're crushing on him, like, you know, do they have a crush on him? Yeah. Um, exactly. Do you want to ask him out? <laughs> yes. Is that why you're asking? Um, but I, um, but once, once somebody gives you that privilege of, of able to validate, then mm-hmm. you can say when someone says, is he gay? You could say he is, yes. isn't it great? Yes. Yes, he is. Don't you think it's awesome? Like there, 
that's enough that's because enough. you've already set the tone and you've already set the expectation of what that response is going to be from them because mm-hmm. anything other than uh-huh is bad yeah oh thank yeah. you okay that's great advice and i'm going to be sharing that with many many parents <laughs> in addition yeah. to the parents that listen to this podcast well i think we've mm-hmm. used up a lot of your time but we uh, we do a little section here at the end of the show called look okay. listen learn mm-hmm. where okay. we there talk math involved do i need a pencil and paper no, there's no <laughs> math there's involved. almost there's no like the, learning involved the states and the and the cities or anything there's no quiz. There's no, no quiz. quiz. It's just trying to give a little uh, fun, almost like a pop culture to do list for people who are listening. Yeah. So things okay. that either you've been watching or reading or listening to, it could be music or a podcast, or just a lesson you've learned this week about, it could be a new shampoo you found that you really loved and just want people <laughs> to know about. So it's just something you've looked at, listened to, or learned this week that you'd love to be able to share. And we'll, Hey, Missy, do you want to kick it off? <laughs> sure. So I watched I Care a Lot on Netflix. Have either of you watched it? Uh-uh. No. I took a little time one weekend and I was like, I'm just going to sit and watch a movie. Mm-hmm. And it, I don't want to give away spoilers, but basically it's elder abuse is what Ooh. it comes down to. And it's done in a really like creepy way. It's, it's fictional as far as I know, but I think it is based on some real events. Oh. Um, and so it is so upsetting what happens to these people Mm -hmm. and I cannot get it out of my head thinking about how at some point you you reach a place in your life where you might not have that many people around you for whatever reason right and if you don't have the support system it's very vulnerable and if you don't have your affairs in order or even if you think you do it's very easy to be taken advantage Mm of Mm -hmm. and oh I mean it is not like I said, it's not a documentary and it's done in a somewhat light manner. I mean, it's a movie, but it is, I, I just, I can't get it out of my head. So I think everybody should watch it. And I think you should wrap your arms around the people in your life who are older and prepare yourself for the day that you're in that position. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's stunning and very well acted too. So oh, that's a good one. Okay. What did I listen? Yeah, are we giving you enough time? (laughs) Um, Yeah, because I I had to, something I just binge watched on Netflix last week, because I've been trying to like pull away from the news now that Uh things are starting to to, like, hopefully (laughs) calm (laughs) and people aren't trying to overthrow the government and everything. <laughs> so I don't have to like, you know, that did, did, did breaking news. And it's like, oh my God, like, because I have a uh, son living in Washington. So I got really concerned. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, I watched Firefly Lane. Have Ooh, you seen it on Netflix? Right. No, no, I haven't. Oh, for watch number one, it okay. is a, two best friends that it's only one season, but there's a second season. I have no idea how it's going to end. Best friends, and they take two different paths. And one is kind of, you know, married with the kids. And the other one is like a superstar. And it, it it's just, it makes you think, you know, yeah. and it's, it's a lot of retro, like they'll flash back and they'll do like a, an, um, a scene where they're, they're teens and then they'll do a scene, you know, cont- in contemporary time. And it's going back to the seventies and then present day and it's all over the place. So it's, That's you cool. have to pay attention. So it is, it's really, it's a must see for all women. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, we will yeah. definitely bring it on the list that one in the show notes. I know. What about you, Suzanne? Well, you know that I'm always like a few months late on the bandwagon of things that everybody else has already watched. So we finally watched Nomad Land. Oh, um, I haven't watched that yet either. Oh, if you're even later yeah. than me. Okay. Uh, because they just won all those, what is yep. it, the Emmys? Was it the Golden Globes? Golden, just Globe. Golden, Golden yeah. Globes. Yeah. That's what it was. It's, okay. it's, a, it's a slow, gentle pace. It's, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it just kind of meanders along, but it's that Francis, Francis McDormand. Am I saying I that love right? Her. Francis McDormand. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Dorman. Thank you. And so it's just, I mean, it's this lifestyle that I cannot even imagine. It's not for uh, you. Um, I see the beauty of it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I also, yeah, Kelly, I'm not sure if you know, in Austin, we had some serious uh, weather issues yeah. uh, a couple of weeks back. Yeah. And so my entire family and two dogs and I were living in a tent in our living room because our house temperature had gotten down to 45 degrees. <laughs> And so I kind of had this weird nomad land experience in my (laughs) own house and I did not like it (laughs) at all, especially people around you. It doesn't, she travel by herself. She travels by herself, but it was just a very interesting, especially because I kept on, you know, I think we're always thinking of Hollywood endings, or at least where I would naturally go is that I always assume people are seeking connection. So there's so many opportunities throughout the movie where I'm like, oh, this will be the person that is her person that now travels with her or that whatever, but it's just very much a a connection, but a really kind of a beautiful one. I mean, very Mm -hmm. deep connections, but it does it shows that the connection doesn't have to be in person Mm, to be a connection mm -hmm. because they'll connect. And when they're there, they're there. And when they're not, they're still in their hearts and they're Mm. nomading somewhere else. So I just think that I I kept on waiting for this Hollywood ending of like, oh, well, then she'll meet this nomad man or this nomad (laughs) woman and they're going to fall in love. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just expecting them to share their trailer, put their trailers together and have them welded. So now they got a double trail. I don't know. Or it's actually not even trailers. Most of them are these vans. I think I would like that. It sounds like my life, actually. So, I <laughs> well, you'll have to give it a watch. It's a very yeah. beautiful cinematography. Is beautiful story. Is beautiful. Acted That's what I've heard. Is that it's just a pretty, pretty film. Yes. Yes. I think maybe it was just too soon after the tent in the living room incident for me to fully like be able to right. get my heart into it. I was like, right. yeah. And female director. So yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So yeah, highly, highly recommend that is what I have been looking at this week. Is there anything we didn't cover that you want to make sure that we get parent up get out there? The amazing <laughs> book for inspiring your child to be their best <laughs> selves. There we go. I can't wait till the book comes. I know it should be here today. Just that it's like I said, I think it is an inspirational book that points out instead of telling you what you're doing wrong to really like hit home what you're doing right and how you Mm. can do that better. The thing is, I I happen to bring the receipts with this because not only do I say what I did as the kids were growing up, now they're adults and one is an Olympian, the next one's a lawyer, the next one's a scientist. And then I have three in college, one in grad school and two in, in college. And I got to interview them. And I got to ask them um, what did, what worked and what didn't work. And the number one thing that resonated was what my one son said. He said, you weren't afraid when we were mad at you. You never tried to run after us to like, you didn't care. And he said that it kind of hurt me, but I learned from it. Like I learned that Mm. I had to earn your respect it, you'd love and respect weren't the same thing. And he said, knowing that you, you had the ability to be upset, like to, to not care if I didn't like you bothered me so much because I didn't want to disappoint you. Oh, wow. And I mean, I, I, no, in truth, it broke my heart. Like if somebody was like, if I knew they were like, Oh yeah. Upset with me and didn't want me to come in their room or what. But I acted so like, (laughs) I've been 14, done that, been there. Like, but on the inside, I was crying. Right. But I I always tell mine that I have friends. Right. I, and I am secure enough for them to be angry at me. That's right. That, that that's not going to make me change my mind about whatever it is that made them mad. That's the (laughs) the unfortunate part that. You're going to have to deal with your kids not liking you in order for mm-hmm. them to love you properly, mm-hmm. right? And fully. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. you don't demote yourself. Like to moms, you will have time. Like now I have, like some of my adult kids are here because the pandemic, their campuses are all closed. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. they've been working from here. And I, we were, you know, now I can have wine with them. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> crazy sitting and watching a movie and having wine, right? And, Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, we're not friends, but we are, we do friendly things. Yeah. And I would never put on their shoulders, my 
like that they were in charge of my happiness or my safety right. or my well being. But I expect them as decent human beings to like, you know, take me to the emergency room if they find me <laughs> on the floor. Like, you know, you know to care dead. for you. Mommy, right. No, I expect them to do that, but I don't expect yeah. them to like, let's cheer mom up today, you know? Yeah. No. I think that's a really important conversation to have with your kids mm -hmm. that I, I have one who's just, who will say, are you okay? Are you okay? And we've had to have the talk a couple of times where you're not in charge of making mm -hmm. me okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also I need you to know that sometimes I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. mad or I'm sad mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. is bothering me and it's not your job to fix that. Mm -hmm. It's my mm -hmm. job to take mm -hmm. care of it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have one child who will say, no, no, no. I just want to make it all better for you. And oh, I know. Oh, can't. Yeah which is so mm -hmm. sweet, but I'm like, that's right. not your burden to carry. Right. So we have to review right. that all the time because right. that's, they need to see mm -hmm. people go through that. They need to see that mm -hmm. their parents are human, but also that their parents know how to take care of things. Right. And the thing is, sometimes it's okay to like fake it. Like, yeah, you don't really yeah. need to be so vulnerable. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, fake especially you with divorced it. parents, when they have a romance and it doesn't work out, and they, Ooh. they go through that heartbreak with their kids and things like that. And I just say, it's your romance life is not healthy to be discussing with your kids mm -hmm. because you're asking them to contribute to situations. They don't have the tools right. to yeah. help you solve. Yeah. And yeah. they don't have any control over it. No. Um, and yeah. you know what? They're the, like the center of the universe. So they think they cause. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, so yeah. And what a yeah. gift though, to be able to interview your kids and get that feedback. I love that. I'm yeah. going to write a book just for that excuse. And they're in there. <laughs> they're, they are in the, the follow-up with each chapter is in there. So uh, yeah, is there anything else? Well, so in addition to the amazing book, Parent Up, you've got an active Instagram account, correct? Uh -huh. oh, and yes, you're active on social media. Do, uh, we don't give your hand. We'll link to the handles too, but if you yeah. want to say them for people it's who Krippon, don't want K-R-I-P-P-O-N. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, any other place on social media or is Instagram your place of choice? I have Twitter, uh, Authentic Change. And I'm, well, I'm on Clubhouse now. I've been hearing I about that. Rooms, we haven't right. ventured in there yet. I don't know that we've been invited, Missy. <laughs> I'm, uh, I've been speaking um, and I want to open my own clubhouse, um, a room about athletes because I've been getting so many DMs about Zoom ballet and the value of like doing oh. sports virtually and uh -huh. limited time with coaching because I have a podcast, The Trophy Life. Mm -hmm. And I talk to people who have participated either in the arts or academics or sports and how that competitive play has served to be an asset in their professional mm -hmm. life later in life. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to open a room about that. So maybe if any of your yeah. listeners are interested, they can DM me about that. Oh, definitely. Okay. And the podcast too. We'll make sure that we have links for all of yes. that. And I am going to follow up with you about the informed parent stuff. Thank you so much. It was right. such a pleasure Thank to you. meet Thank you. you. Yes. So great to talk Keep to you. Keep in touch. Definitely will. Thank you. And good luck with the book. Parent up, y'all. Yes. Thank Thanks, Bye -bye. Kelly. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us for the mom and the dot, dot, dot podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show today. And if you know someone else who could benefit from today's episode, be sure to share it with them. Also, please subscribe and rate us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find links to all the things we discussed today in the show notes over at our website, momandpodcast.com with the A-N-D spelled out. In between shows, you can find us at the socials, including our private mom and community Facebook group. You can find links to the group, all of our socials, and our questions and comments section over at our website, momandpodcast.com. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you so much. Now go out there and make your ellipses count.